I'm Emma Lubitsch and you're watching Can TV. We're here today with Patrick Chestnut from Democratize ComEd. So thank you so much for being with us. Yeah, thanks for having me, Emma. I'm really glad to be here. So talk to us about the campaign to democratize ComEd and when it began. Yeah, it began, I believe it was in January 2019 as an official campaign. Uh, it started from the Chicago Democratic Socialists of America, but it's really a broad grassroots coalition campaign with the Sunrise Movement, Food and Water Watch, and others. And really at its core is the idea that a public good should be under public control. So right now, ComEd, the utility that gives us all our energy, is privately owned and it's, invest it's controlled by investors. What that means is that it's based around the profit motive and it's accountable to its shareholders. We think instead that it should be democratically owned and controlled, that community should have a voice in our energy future, and that should be accountable to the public. And if we do that, we'll really have a future where our utility works for the benefit of people, for the planet, rather than for profit. What are the issues that you have identified with ComEd? So beyond the bribery scandal, how have you found that ComEd is failing consumers? Yeah, I think it takes a number of different forms. One is just in basic economics and material injustice. I think we see that year after year, while ComEd makes $200 million in profit for its shareholders, a number of Chicagoans struggle to pay their energy bills. More than 90% of low-income Chicagoans are energy insecure, which means they have to make tough decisions about whether to pay their energy bills or to buy essentials like groceries, prescription drugs, or pay their rent. We know that across its customer base, ComEd shuts off about 218,000 households from power every single year. And we don't think that's right. You know, we think that in the modern world, power is a right. Heat and lights are human rights, and no one should have to choose between paying their energy bill or buying groceries or prescription drugs. It's also about the issue of climate change, the Green New Deal, and the future we face as a planet. You know, right now, we need to decarbonize our energy by 2030, and we're not going to get there with ComEd in control. Right now, ComEd just admitted in hearings at City Council last week, they're only at about 3 or 4% renewable energy right now. They're only going to get to 10% by 2025, despite a state mandate. We have to fully decarbonize by 2030. That requires bold action, public control, and democratic accountability. And then third, I think it really goes to the issue of power and corruption. What we've seen recently with ComEd's bribery scandal that just has broken wide open over the last month is that when ComEd is accountable to their shareholders and based around profit, they're fundamentally incentivized to distort our government in their interests rather than in the public interest. And no amount of reform is going to change that. They will always be about maximizing their profits for shareholders by distorting our government. So if we take public control and ensure democratic accountability and oversight, we can make them work for us and root out their corruption. And so talk about that distinction. So you're proposing not just municipalizing the utility, but democratizing it. So can you describe what the difference between those two things are? Yeah, absolutely. It's a really good question. It's an important one. We're called democratized comment for a reason. So municipalizing the utility means that we take it from private ownership to public ownership. And that is definitely better because it does remove the, pro the profit motive and the accountability to shareholders. But we don't think it's enough to go from privately owned and controlled to bureaucratically controlled. We want it to be truly democratically controlled. That means that every Chicagoan in every Chicago community has a vote, has a voice, and has real power. And I think that's just so important. You know, when you look at environmental injustice across the city, look at what's happening with the destruction of the uh, former Crawford coal power plants, right, by a company called Hilco in Little Village. Right. right now, city bureaucrats are allowing uh, dangerous pollution to unfold and really irresponsible stoke smokestack demolitions to unfold in the midst of a pandemic that the community opposes. Right now, General Iron, a metal recycling plant that is too dirty, too environmentally harmful for uh, Lincoln Park, is going to be moved into the southeast side, a working class majority of Latinx neighborhood. And the local community doesn't want it, but city bureaucrats look likely to approve it. That's something that we oppose. We think that every community should have real voice and control. We think that if we make it democratically owned and controlled, we can just open up so many more possibilities for Chicagoans to determine their own energy future. If control of the power utility was returned to the city of Chicago, what would you say to people who would question whether the city in its current financial state would be able to run it more cost effectively than ComEd? So by keeping prices low for consumers? Yeah, it's a really good question. I think 
first thing everyone should know is that right now the city has conducted what's called a feasibility study to really look at financing and what it will really cost to own and operate ComEd. Uh, they're holding that right now, the reviewing drafts. We really want that to be public. We also want to make sure that city council has a series of open public hearings to take this seriously and look at what would happen. I think the important thing to understand here is that ComEd is a profitable entity. Like I said, they make about $200 million in profit every year just from the city of Chicago. And if we controlled it as a city, we could likely bond it using what's called public utility certificates and pay that down over time using revenues from the utility. It doesn't necessarily even have to affect the city's general operating budget. But more than that, I think the important question, to keep, to, the important point to keep in mind is that this is a long-term investment in our future. As Alderman Andre Vasquez likes to say, this is almost the reverse parking meter deal. Instead of making a big investment up front, getting a lot of money for a short-term gain that then ends up going to benefit private hands rather than the city, we want to make a large upfront investment that opens up just a whole range for gen possibilities for generations of Chicagoans. It's going to be a good deal for Chicago. And I think the real question is going to be not about our budget, it's about our priorities. How many other places in the U.S. have municipalized power? So would you say that Los Angeles is probably the best size comparison to a city like Chicago? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Los Angeles is a great comparison. I think in general, for those who don't know, about one in seven energy customers across the America are served by public power already. In ways that are actually kind of surprising, places you might not expect it, the entire state of Nebraska publicly owned power. Los Angeles, Burlington, Vermont, Chattanooga, Tennessee. There are so many examples and what we actually see is that by and large, when you look at it, compare it to investor owned utilities, publicly owned utilities provide lower rates, better service and greener energy. And that's what we wanna have happen here in Chicago. And so I think one point that's been emphasized by city officials is that there are a lot of cities in the US with municipalized power utilities. However, there are very few that have been private and then transitioned to being publicly controlled. So what would you say to that point? Yeah, it's, you know, it, you are right. It's not the kind of thing that we've seen a lot of. We have seen a few dozen successful municipalization efforts over right. the last few decades. Um, it would be a big endeavor, right? It's going to require us purchasing ComEd's assets and then severing them from the system. But again, it's one that we can afford and it's one that's a long-term investment in our future. I think most municipalization efforts haven't failed because of feasibility or because of finances. It's been a matter of power and political will. We know that every time an effort like this unfolds, that the investor-owned utilities turn to a traditional playbook. They throw millions of dollars around. They spread myriad misinformation to try and scare us off and make it look like we don't have a choice. But we do. This is something we can do if we build the people power, if we keep holding Comet accountable, and if we demand a better future and think boldly. And so Comet has quoted the price to buy out its assets at around $10 billion. But Democratized Comet is doing a cost analysis independently using public records. So has that study been completed? And if so, I mean, what does that number look like compared to Comet's estimate? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a great question. I think the first thing is that Comet says $10 billion now. They said $5 billion a while ago. They've right. thrown out all sorts of different numbers. Their estimates keep changing. And I wouldn't take anything they say at face value. It's important to keep in mind, their interest here is in ensuring their survival and trying to scare us off and make it seem like we don't have a choice. They wanna take these municipalization off the table before it's even seriously considered. So our initial estimates that our camp based on our campaign's research uh, from a, a while ago are about $5 billion, but you know we'll see what the real number is. And the, the, this is why seeing the feasibility study publicly considering it is important. And what's, again, I can't emphasize enough, Comet's so used to doing backroom deals that work in their, in, for their benefit. This needs to be transparent. We need to have a series of public hearings about the feasibility, about the financing options, and we need to really seriously consider municipalization rather than dismissing it out of hand based on the numbers Comet is throwing around. And so if democratization was successful, I mean, what changes would Chicagoans be able to see? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, so there are a lot of possibilities. The key thing is because it's democratically owned and operated, it's not for me to say, it's for all of us to say together based on the people we elect to run our municipal utility. But I think there are a range of possibilities. You know, we can expand low income assistance programs, right? We can make sure we can take some of that money ComEd's making in profit right now and put it back into the city to try and help more people 
who are struggling to pay their energy bills and who deserve to have reliable energy to get by, to stay healthy, especially given all the economic struggles unfolding around us during this pandemic. We can look at it to really take bold aggressive action on climate change. Like I said, we wanna see Chicago be a leader in pushing for a sustainable future and fully decarbonize by 2030. Just to give you a sense of what this investment could mean, right? Common makes $200 million in profits every year. That could electrify about 200 CTA buses each and every year. Could put 2,000 social workers in Chicago public schools. It doesn't just have to be about ComEd. We can pay it into the city general fund and use it for the things our city needs and our communities want. It opens up all kinds of new possibilities and they're ones that we wanna give Chicagoans the power to decide on. And so the franchise agreement with ComEd expires on December 31st of 2020. So what needs to happen before then for municipalization to become a viable option? Yeah, so I think, the, like I said, we really wanna push for serious public hearings. We wanna take the time to do this right and that means that we are in support of Alderman Laspada, who as a first word resident, I should say, by the way, I'm so proud he's my Alderman. And we really value his partnership and leadership on this. He's been in this fight from the beginning. He's pushed for a short term one year extension in light of the pandemic of the city's other economic crises it's gonna be facing when it budgets later this fall. And because we haven't seen a feasibility study yet. And we're in favor of Alderman Laspada's push. We need to take the time to really seriously look at this and to do it right. But it's not just about city council and what they're going to do in their hearings. It's about us continuing to talk about this campaign and to bring people in. You know, again, it's the reason other municipalities haven't democratized their utilities is political will. So we need more Chicagoans to join us, to really organize with us, to raise their voices and to push for this because it's in all of our interests. And so where can people go to learn more? Uh, they can go to our websites, just demcomed.org. D-E-M-C-O-M-E-D.org. You can click a little get involved button, sign up for our mailing list. You can also follow us on social media. We're at DemComEd. And we would just love to have you join us. You know, this is the kind of thing that touches every Chicagoan. We're seeing so many people get excited and want to join us in this campaign. And we'd love to have more.